Good morning. I hope you're having a great week. I hope you receive a blessing today as we pause in the middle of the week and do our Wednesday devotion. I wanted to share a, a topic with you today, and the title of it is Judgment for David's Sin. I want us to look at King David. Uh, obviously, you have picked up that I'm reading and studying through First Chronicles, and I want to share with you from chapter 21. I wanted us to look at even David, how sometimes he doesn't listen and he does commit sin. All of us do this, and we need to realize the consequences, and they can be far-reaching. You know, when I think of sin, I think about this picture. What if I told you that I already told you, and you didn't listen? That probably would fit all of us. I know all the wives are probably saying amen when they're thinking about the husbands right now, but I really think that fits every one of us because we've all been told what the consequences of sin are, and we also have been told that the consequences are far-reaching and they go beyond us. Read with me. Let's, let's go with this First Chronicles 21. It says, Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take a census of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the troops, Go and count the Israelites from Bathsheba to Dan. Then report back to me so that I may know how many there are. But Joab replied, May the Lord multiply his troops a hundred times over. My Lord the King, are they not all my Lord's subjects? Why does my Lord want to do this? Why should he bring guilt on Israel? The king's word, however, overruled Joab. So Joab left and went throughout Israel and then came back to Jerusalem. Joab reported the number of the fighting men to David. In all Israel there were 1,100,000 men who could handle a sword, including 470,000 in Judah. But Joab did not include Levi and Benjamin in the numbering because the king's command was repulsive to him. This command was also evil in the sight of God. So he punished Israel. We see in this scripture that David disobeyed God. The problem is not taking a census. The problem is God knows David's heart. God had made a promise that he would give Abraham a number of descendants that would outnumber the sands of the sea. So there's no need to take a census. So the question is, why was David doing the census? We read back in other scriptures that it was okay to take a census when they were building the temple or when they were tithing to build the temple. But we know that God knows man's heart. Apparently David either didn't trust God and he wanted to know how many soldiers he had or David just wanted to count everything he had. He wanted to gloat and feel big. You know, maybe we do that sometimes. Maybe we've accomplished something, looking at our bank accounts. Maybe we look at our house or things we've built and we want to gloat about what we have accomplished and we're not staying in God's plan. When we do that, we're sinning against God because we're not giving him the glory. And that is exactly what David did in this scripture. And we see that a plague come upon Israel. And if we read on in 1 Chronicles 21, 14, we see that the plague caused 70,000 people in Israel to die. That's a big price to pay. You know, in our society today, we have this motto, you know, it's, it's my life. I can do what I want to. So we have this self-righteousness, this freedom that no one can encroach upon. But we need to realize that what you do affects me. What I do affects you because we can bring curses or blessings upon this nation that we live in that we're celebrating this Memorial Day weekend. And we need to remember to do what's right, do God's will, and we need to encourage one another to do the same. Because just as King David did, we know he was a man of God, but by his sin, Joab warned him. He didn't listen. And look at the ramifications and the consequences. 70,000 people died. You and I need to reach out. We need to pray. We need to lovingly guide and direct people back to do God's will. It's important for us to do that. And keep that in mind as you go about your life. The things you do 
They affect you. They affect your family. They affect your loved ones. You bring blessings or bring curses. God will always forgive our sins. We're taught that. We practice that in our church every Sunday when we come around the communion table. If we confess them, repent and turn from them. Often God will even intervene to make the consequences of our sins less severe. But we need to be reminded. We have to pay a price. Scars will often remain and scars are there to remind us of our sin, but also to remind us of the power of God, that he can heal us and that should remind us also when we see those scars to thank God for his grace, his mercy, and his blessing. Today I want to invite you to join us in church. Come and worship with us on Sunday morning at 1030. You'll have puppets, uh, great prayers, great singing, solo singers, You'll just enjoy the loving environment, and we invite you to be a part of it as we spread the gospel. I want to leave you with a prayer today, if you would, if you, if you would pray with me. Almighty God, as we come to you in prayer, we humble ourselves. We're reminded, Father, that sin is such a powerful force in our lives. And we're also reminded, Father, that as a church family, we need to be united. We need to lift one another up to help each other not to sin. Father, there's somebody listening to my voice today that is dealing with a temptation. Maybe it's pornography, maybe it's adultery, fornication, whatever it might be, or embezzlement. Father, I just pray that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit, that they would reach out to me or another loved one that's filled with your Holy Spirit and receive that strength and that guidance so that they will not sin against you and receive the consequences. God, we know you want to bless us. You want to do what's good for us. And Father, we pray that you'd help us to reach out to you, that we might do what you would have us to do, that we might receive your blessings. Thank you in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would have mercy on us. In Christ's name I pray, amen. May God bless you. I hope to see you again soon.